Right, so next we're going to look very quickly at the problems to do with synapses, um, uh, depression, schizophrenia, uh, the use of ecstasy and so on. Okay, essentially that really those questions come down to understanding synapses, but you know, it, it does affect whole uh, or brain function and so, you know, I'm no expert on this, but the, the way I make sense of what's going on here, in the context of what we understand, so I think, I think we understand how action potentials move along a neuron. I think we understand that when, when the action potential gets to the end of a neuron, there's a synapse, and because of the events of a synaptic transmission, information goes from one neuron to another. For me, the biggest challenge is to go from understanding that to what the hell is going on in the brain, okay? And the way I make sense of it, I'm not saying that this is fully correct, <clears throat> but the way I make sense of it for my purposes is to understand that, okay, the brain is a big ball of neurons. Neurons in certain parts of the brain have a responsibility to carry out certain functions, okay? Now, this is by no means in any way accurate okay so what we're saying is the brain is a big ball of neurons the neurons in certain parts of the brain ha ha each have their different function or the as aspect of the body that they control or the aspect of behavior that they control okay so all functions functions they all have their different jobs to do now the thing is that the brain works by coordination of these different areas. So all these different areas have their job to do, great. But the way that the whole brain functions to make any real uh, effect of each of these parts doing their job, they have to be able to communicate with each other. And the way that the neurons in one area communicate and coordinate with neurons in a different area is through synapses so this area communicates with this area and this area is therefore able to do its job because there's synaptic connections between the neurons here and here so synapses this area is able to communicate with this area because of synapses okay and essentially if we understand how or if we understand the significance of properly functioning synapses, is, then we can start to understand how, A, how a brain functions, because different parts of it can uh, communicate information and therefore make sense of it, okay? So, for example, the thalamus is here, the visual processing center is here, the eyes are, I don't know, somewhere down here, okay? Now, there's the neurons of the optic nerve are going to eventually, I don't know how they go there, but make their way and synapse with the neurons in the thalamus. The neurons in the thalamus extend away from here and must synapse with neurons in the visual processing center. And that's how we make sense of visual information that was, uh, or information of light that was received here. Okay, so all this is working because of the correct formation of synapses. Similarly, we don't need to understand all of, all of the mechanisms of how each of these brain parts do their function, though you do need to know what they do in general terms, but the way they're able to do what they do is because they are synapses, or they, the, the neurons in that part of the brain has formed synapses with neurons from other parts of the brain or the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system and so on, okay? And that's how it's able to do its job. So when we get to the area of problems with synapses, we need to have this in the background, okay? It, but, and it just needs to be in the background, right? We need to understand that, you know, if, if this synapse is not working properly because of too much neurotransmitter or too little neurotransmitter, it's not just the story of this little synapse here, it's the story of what might be happening you know, across the brain in a particular area. And therefore, this particular area is not able to do its job properly because 
at the level of those individual thousands and thousands of synapses that might be here, same thing is going wrong in those thousands of synapses. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's look at what problems there could be at synapses. Okay, so what we have said up to now is that proper brain fun function ultimately comes down to properly functioning synapses. And what we'll see now is that any pro the problems to do with synapses that cause uh, brain disorders are, in, in our cases, are to do with the synapses not working properly because of improper levels of neurotransmitters. Okay, so that's this is the idea that we, this is the bigger idea that we must keep in our head. And you know, in the background, we've got to remember about the brain that we said, that the, you know, brain functions normally because different parts of it can function because of synaptic connections, because of, um, and because they can communicate with each other through synapses, um, the, the brain can function normally. And, the, and because of this, we must remember how synapses work. So that's also in the background of our discussion. Okay. So what we said is synapses, brain disorders, occur because synapses don't work properly. Synapses don't work properly because of improper levels of neurotransmitters. Now let's look specifically at some examples of those neurotransmitters. So the first one is dopamine. Dopamine's got two functions. When it's, when it's the right levels in the brain, then one of its functions is to properly result, properly cause stimulation of neurons in the motor cortex of the brain. Just got a quick sketch of where that motor cortex is and what that results in is no, normal motor function so proper control of uh, things that are under voluntary control part of the somatic uh, nervous system okay so things like movement uh, skeletal muscle control that, that is under that uh, motor function control okay and when uh, dopamine is also at the right levels. It also affects neurons in the prefrontal cortex, so at the front of the brain. Um, and this region of the brain is responsible for emotions, decision making, social behavior, amongst other things. Again, I'm no expert here. Okay, so proper levels of the dopamine result in the synapses working as they should, resulting in the areas of the brain that should be stimulated being stimulated, so the neurons in those areas of the brain getting proper stimulation, having the appropriate number of action potentials, impulses being generated in those areas to ensure their normal function. Problem occurs when, due to environmental reasons, or most more likely there's kind of underlying genetic conditions plus environmental factors, and you know different kinds of studies have been done to see whether these things are more impacted by environmental influence or or there's genetic underlying causes is that for whatever reason the levels of the dopamine might not be right and in that case uh, if there's not enough dopamine then uh, what we get is parkinson's disease where there's a lack of no normal motor function because of what we just discussed also, um, if there is not enough dopamine, then actually if there's too much dopamine, then what can happen is uh, in the prefrontal cortex, then people uh, might not make normal decisions, they might have abnormal emotions and social behavior, i.e. we're talking about schizophrenia, okay? So the, you know, dopamine's got these two effects. But when there's too little dopamine, we need to think, you know, if there's too little, so less dopamine, and we're thinking about Parkinson's disease and its symptoms, okay? Too much dopamine, we're thinking its effects of, on the prefrontal cortex and abnormal emotions, decisions, uh, social behavior. So if we're talking about too much dopamine, we're thinking about schizophrenia, and I don't know how to spell that. Okay, so that's dopamine. Serotonin is another example of a neurotransmitter. 
uh, its effects are, you know, wide-ranging in the brain. So in terms of the areas that it specifically works, um, it's pretty much all over. Its effects, among many other things, are to reduce anxiety and regulate mood. And when you don't have enough serotonin produced, you can then therefore suffer from depression. And if you have drugs such as uh, ecstasy, what ecstasy does is artificially increase the levels of serotonin in the brain, um, obviously then producing the feelings of um, very high happiness and very little anxiety and so on. Okay, so that's ecstasy there. So the main things uh, to, to think about is dopamine neurotransmitter, serotonin neurotransmitter, their levels have to be at a, at, at a certain um, normal point for them to function and affect the areas of the brain to result in normal behavior and mood. But when their levels are too high or too low, uh, those areas of the brain don't work properly and so we get those disorders such as Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, um, and uh, the effects of drugs such as ecstasy.